So here, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu reads the verses. Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa illa tazkiratan li man yakhsha tanzilan min man khalaqa al-arda wa al-samawat al-ula Taha Indeed, we have not revealed this Qur'an to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order for it to be a source of distress for you. No, it is none but revelation from the most merciful. Allahu Akbar, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, it is a reminder for those who fear Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that fear. May He grant us that humbleness and humility and that surrendering. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was drawn to tears. He read these verses and he was shocked. He was actually amazed. And he said, take me to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine all the hatred and all the enmity and all the evil that he was engaged in prior to this moment. Suddenly it came crashing to the ground and his heart was filled with instant love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Believe me, he is one of my heroes and I'm sure he is yours too. Subhanallah. Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu anh, one of the greatest of those to walk on this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anh. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was taken to the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to gather. 39 men had accepted Islam. He was the 40th, according to most of the narrations, he was the 40th man to accept Islam. So he walked into the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam and they allowed him to come in. One might ask, why did they just allow him to come in when he had his sword with him? And according to some narrations, there was a sign that he was, you know, just in a bit of a quarrel earlier on because of blood and what have you. They allowed him because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made a dua that the companions were aware of. That dua was Allahumma a'izza al-Islam bi ahad al-umarain. Oh Allah, strengthen Islam through the acceptance of Islam by one of the two strong men, either Umar ibn al-Khattab or Amr ibn Hisham, who was known as Abu Jahl. And the Prophet ﷺ later says, in my heart, I always knew that Umar was a better option. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us goodness. So this goes to teach us again, remember to make good prayers for those who sometimes might do something bad. We have a weakness. Our own children, we curse them sometimes when they do something bad. It happens. It's the weakness of man. Don't ever do that. It's the moment of acceptance of prayer. Why don't you make a good prayer for your children? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, my child has disobeyed me. Oh Allah, bless the child. Make the child obedient to you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us with the best of children. I mean, so here Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu is faced with Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib who was at the door of Al-Arqam ibn Abi al-Arqam radiallahu anhu and he was walking in. So Hamza says, Oh Allah, this is Umar. In yuridillahu bihi khayran yuslim. If Allah intends goodness from this man, he will accept Islam. And oh Allah, if anything else is intended by this man, make it easy for us to overcome this man. Wa in yakun ghayra dhalika, yakun qatluhu alayna hayyina. Oh Allah, make it easy for us to overpower and overcome this man if he intends any evil. So as he walks in, According to some narrations, he declared the faith. And according to some other narrations, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Umar, you are welcome. Enter the fold of Islam. And he says, Ya Rasulallah, inni ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu annaka abduhu wa rasooluhu. I bear witness, O oh Messenger, that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, our Maker. And I bear witness that you are indeed a Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that moment, there was a takbir that was heard that was heard all the way to the Kaaba. So many people heard it in Mecca. It was an amazing takbir. And this was because the Sahaba was so happy because of what had happened to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us as well. The first thing that happened, he says, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are we not on the right path? Yes, we are. 
Well, what are we fearing for? Let us get up and go and pray at the Kaaba. Why must we do it in the house of Al-Arqam here? And he was a leader of Quraysh. And he says, one of the things that delayed him to accept Islam was the fact that he thought to himself, I'm a big ambassador of Quraysh. I'm a wealthy businessman. I have so much respect in Quraysh. If I accept Muhammad, I'm going to lose everything. And he says that actually kept him back. Otherwise, he would have been one of the first to accept Islam. But because of his top position and his wealth and he was fearing to lose so much, he said, no, let me not accept this man. However, this day of turning is so amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him in Islam more than he had prior to Islam in terms of his status and level and respect. Up to today, when we say his name, we say, Radiyallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him, Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he got up and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up and they made two lines of people. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was the leader of one and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu was the leader of the other. 20 people on either side and they marched all the way to the Kaaba and that was the first day that they congregated and they prayed right at the Kaaba and the people of Quraysh were gobsmacked. They did not know what to say. No words to utter. Why? Because Umar is with them. What should we do now? They're just watching. Strong man whom we had hoped that he would deal with the crisis became a part of the crisis according to Quraysh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us all. This was the power. Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu anhu. He says, when Omar accepted Islam radiallahu anhu, that is when we became powerful. That is when the, the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was literally accepted. The strength was granted to Islam through the acceptance of Islam of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. We could sit in groups in public. We could tell people we were Muslim and no one dare lift a finger upon us. This was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Now, the day that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu migrated to Medina Munawwara, and this is one of our heroes we are talking about. He became an instant hero amongst the Muslimin. He defended them. No one dared take the name of a Muslim. When it was his time to go for Hijrah to Medina Munawwara, he did not do what the others were doing. What was everyone doing? They were all quietly going. By night, they would go away because Quraysh and their relatives were persecuting them. They would go onto the road and path and take away whatever they had, beat them up some cases, bring them back in some cases and do so much in terms of harm to them. So Umar ibn al-Khattab heard all this and he knew he had a big family and he knew Quraysh was large. He went to the Kaaba. According to one narration, he made his tawaf around the Kaaba and then he went onto the maqam and he called out very loudly. He says, Oh Quraysh, I am going out for Hijrah. I am leaving to Medina Munawwara. Anyone has a problem with that? See me on the other side. See me on the other side of this valley. Anyone who wants their mother not to see them again. Anyone who wants their children to be orphaned. And anyone who wants their wives to become widows. See me on the other side. Try and mess with Umar ibn al-Khattab. Come see what happens. Nobody followed him. They saw him leave and he left with his group that he had. And nobody dared speak about Umar ibn al-Khattab. This was the man and this was the hero. When it comes to Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had intended to make Umrah with his companions, the sixth year of Hijrah, and they went to Mecca. Just outside Mecca, they camped in the place known as Hudaybiyah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was there. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions were denied entry into Mecca. They were told after the agreement that look, come back the following year. And the agreement was signed. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we intended Umrah and we should go in no matter what happens. Why should we agree to come back next year? We, I, I don't want to do this. I want to go in now. Let us go. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you know, I am a messenger of Allah. I've been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I told you we will go for Umrah, I did not say that it has to be this year. So we will come back next year. Anyway, he was quite upset in his heart. And as he walked away, he was upset up to the degree that revelation came down when Allah revealed the opening verses of Surah Al-Fatih. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Indeed, we have granted you a clear victory, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And this is when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and some of the companions asked, is this a victory? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, yes, it is. It is revelation from Allah. Then he was happy. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu later on says, that in my life, I engaged in so much of seeking forgiveness of Allah, so much of charity and so much of fasting. And I freed so many of the slaves because I feared the speech that I had on the day of Hudaybiyah must never be held against me. Subhanallah. Because obviously it hurt his heart. How could it have hurt his heart? It only hurt his heart for a good reason because he was a fearless man. He wanted to go in and he was saying, let's go. So this is why he says that I continue to do good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless every single one of us. I have already made mention of what happened at the time of the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I've already made mention of the fact that Umar ibn al-Khattab said, whoever says Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, I will execute him. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu got up and he is the one who explained the truth. And this is when he calmed down. But one of the famous statements of this hero of ours, was he used to say oh messenger let me slice the neck of this man what that meant is let me deal with this man oh messenger he was the one who always had his sword out anyone who did something wrong he would say oh messenger let me deal with him and the prophet وسلم, would say relax relax oh ibn al-khattab take it easy i have not been sent to be harsh i have been sent as a mercy to mankind may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us so this was the man at the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was the first person who stretched his hand and said, Oh Abu Bakr, I am the one who pledges my allegiance to you. You are the most worthy of Khilafah and of being the leader and successor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here is my hand. I pledge my allegiance and everyone followed Umar ibn al-Khattab. So much so that Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says that in my life as a Khalifa, I loved from amongst those who were on the earth, meaning obviously Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away. But I love from amongst those on earth the most Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is my helper and he is the one who has been with me all through my period that I have ruled. This was the statement of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu took the reins of leadership, I'm going to go through a list of what he did because he is our hero, really. He is a champion of note. We know of so many stories of his, I'm sure. But I want to mention what he achieved in the 10 years that he ruled. Remember, I told you he was 13 years younger than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approximately. And he ruled for 10 years. So he too was murdered when he was at the age of 63, approximately 62 to 63. Here is what he did. He was the person who started the use of the Hijri calendar. Today we have the calendar Hijra, 1435 Hijra. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is the one who started that calendar off. And he said from now on the Muslims, whenever we talk about the years, we should relate them to the Hijra. And he made it compulsory. And that is what we are using to this day. He is the one who gathered the people in Taraweeh in Ramadan. So the Taraweeh we read today in a gathering of this nature, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was the one who started that off because before him, they used to read in small groups and the smaller groups later on became larger groups. He said, let us read in one group in the masjid and inshallah we will follow one Imam, even though there were so many recited amongst them. But he put Ubay ibn Ka'b in the front radiallahu anhu and he said, we will all read behind you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. He was the first person who created a proper army, an army that had a job and that was only to defend the Muslims. And he was the first person who had actually sent his army to the borders in order to protect them full time, the borders of the Muslim nation. And he was the first person who created the police department amongst the Muslims, where he had people who would walk around at night and he did too himself finding out what happened and maintaining law and order and seeing that everyone was okay. There are so many incidents. In fact, I can mention to you one very touching incident. One day, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu decided to walk through. He decided to walk through the gullies of Medina Munawwara at night. And he was followed by Talha radiallahu anhu. And he walked into one home quietly when no one was watching. And he came out after a little while 
and he went back. And he had a home that no one would distinguish because when he became the Khalif, he did not change his house. He remained where he was all along. So Talha radiallahu anhu decided to go the following day to that house to see who there was and what happened. And he found there was a very old blind woman there. So he asked her, who came to you last night and why did he come here? She said, I don't know, but it's a man who told me that he will come every so often. He brings me some foodstuffs and he cleans my whole house in a little while and then he goes back. Talha radiallahu anhu says, Subhanallah, this is Amirul Mu'mineen. This is the leader of the Mu'mineen. And he goes himself at night to clean the house of this blind woman and to bring her some food once in a while. This was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. The same man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if Umar walks down a gully, shaitan would never walk down the same gully. Shaitan would walk down the other gully. Because even shaitan feared Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. This was a man, the hero. He was the first man who maintained the roads and built roads between cities and towns. He actually employed his men to service the cities by creating drainage and so many other facilities for the people of the cities and the towns. He was the man. He was the first man who developed what we know today as the Registrar General. You know, everything is recorded, the births, the deaths, and everything. Who is a civil servant? What do they get? And so on. Everything recorded. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is the first man who decided that anyone who memorizes the Quran shall get an allowance from me, subhanallah, from Baytul Mal. You memorize the Quran, you deserve an allowance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Today, people who memorize the Quran, one wonders what is their standing. Because in so many countries, the Imam is the lowest paid in the whole community. May Allah protect us. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab. He knew these are our leaders. They are holding within them the deen. Let them get a stipend from Baytul Mal al-Muslimin, from the treasury of the Muslims. He was the one who developed the treasury of the Muslims in such a beautiful way. He had so much that he used to spend even on the Christians and the non-Muslims who were poor from the coffers of the Muslims. This is the man. He was the man who developed the system of taxing imported goods. When people brought goods from outside, he would tax it according to what he felt. A certain percentage or whatever it was, he was the man. He was a man who decided that the coins need to have specific weight and all the weights should be recorded. And when we are spending, we should have these gold and silver coins of specific weight and size. That was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was a man who, who told his people never to destroy a place of worship that belongs to those who are non-Muslim. He was a man who was very kind to one and all. He was so just that he was known as Al-Faruq. Even prior to him becoming Khalifa, he was known as Al-Faruq, the one who distinguished. He was a just man. It is reported that one day a man came to him and told him, you know, this man was supposed to be penalized because he was a thief. So he said, Oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, how can I be penalized for having been a thief? How can my hand be cut for having been a thief when it was predestined that I was supposed to steal? You see, that is a statement he was using against Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. So the man says, how can this happen? Umar ibn al-Khattab says, well, do you know what? It was predestined that you were going to be penalized as well. So here's the man, punish him. Allahu Akbar. So he was one ahead, always sharp. This was Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. There were so many other stories of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was a man who had surveyed the land. He measured it, everyone's land. And he literally what we have today as the surveyor general, he started it all off. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this great man. But there came a day, 10 years later, there came a day when there was one person who was disgruntled for some reason. His name was Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. Abu Lu'lu was a man from the Persians. And what he did is, he stabbed Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu whilst he was leading Salatul Fajr towards the end of the 23rd year of Hijrah. He stabbed him six times and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu fell down. He was taken away and three days later he passed away. And that man who was known as Abu Lu'lu Fayruz al-Majusi, he killed Umar ibn al-Khattab by stabbing him and he stabbed several other companions who tried to catch him. Some of them were, were killed instantly. And at the same time, 
Abdul Rahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhu managed to get hold of him by throwing a, like a sheet over him. And when that happened, this man committed suicide and died. So to this day, we do not know the exact motive behind the killing of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. But what we do know, it was a Persian man known as Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu with the rank of martyrdom. And may we be united with him. What a hero of Islam. What a great man. What a powerful man. Wallahi, we have only touched on his life but I call on you to go through the details of the life of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu you will find volumes and volumes may Allah bless him and may Allah bless us all wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk thank you so much for listening to the short message I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.